Hey team, welcome to uh, Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Bolan. Today I've got a bit of a treat for you. I've got uh, one of my dear friends and one of the great stuntmen from uh, Hollywood, from California itself. He's in the green room at the moment, but just let me give you a quick intro. Even I had to write these down and I usually know what most of my friends have worked on. Um, so Frosty, Spider-Man, Two Pirates, Two Borns, Two Indies, Quantum of Solace, um, The Hangover, Jack Reacher, Transcendence, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Jurassic World, Guardians of the Galaxy, Venom, Captain Marvel, Hobbs and Shaw, the latest Ford versus Ferrari with our dear mate Matt Damon, and my family's favourite, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. But what we're going to talk about today is a shot, well, two shots that I got from a film set. And uh, I'm going to bring Frosty in now. Hey, Frosty. Hey How are you? Hey, man. Good, man. I, I was giving you a giving you a big intro there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have enough time. The, 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 the interview's over because we've run out of time. <laughs> yeah, I've been lucky. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, it's really, it's, it's like a, an action aficionado's all time great movies <laughs> of the century. It's, uh, it's pretty and stellar. Story with our great friend, Matt, yeah, uh, I know, right? you put me in that one. Yeah, I saw you were part of the pit crew, right? I'm part of the pit crew, yeah. <laughs> Matt kept clowning. He kept calling me the uh, third billing and stuff, and <laughs> I was in it so oh much. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. I, 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 um, I actually sent him a message recently, and after I'd watched it, it was like, wow, great. You made me cry in a Matt Damon film. That is not meant to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. It turned out great. I thought it was uh, a really good film. It was a good experience as well. It was great, and it was along the lines of, uh, for me, it was very much along the lines of um, um, Rush, which which uh, Hemsey did. Yeah, and uh, and, I, and I love that. And and though looking at making one uh, about a friend of mine, my best, my ex best buddy, because he's sadly not with us anymore, Barry Sheen. You can see his helmet actually up in the back there, number seven. And oh I have yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I have the tattoo yeah. wherever it is. And oh, um, I yeah, they look like doing doing a film about him, and um, it'd be it'd be really really interesting to see them do something along the lines of Rush like that. You know, motorbikes. I know you love your motorbikes. I do love my motorbikes. So, I, hey, I triumphed so, 1950 and 1959. Sorry, I missed that. I have a 1950 Triumph Thunderbird and a 59 Triumph Trophy. Oh no! Classic. Way. <laughs> well, my latest. I don't know. I don't know if you saw my Insta lately, but um, I just got a, a a Bond poster with uh, with the the Triumph. I think it was the Scrambler. Oh yeah, I did see that. Congratulations! Yeah. That's massive. It is massive, actually. You know, I mean, I've had some uh, some good career highlights, but it's a bond. I have to say it's Bond. And you know, Bond was the first. Live and Let Die was the first movie I went and saw without my mum and dad, just with my buddies. Oh, wow. um, and I reckon that's probably why I do stunt, um, you know, do action films. What about you? Is that, do you have a background, do you think, of why you got into stunts? Did you see a movie when you were a kid and just gone, right, this is it? You know, I think, I think everyone on stateside loved Hooper, you know, Burt Reynolds, the world's greatest yeah. stuff. And you see that movie and then you see Smokey and the Bandit and you see all those kind of things. You just want to be Burt Reynolds. You know, and then you get you get Fall Guy that comes out. And I think every every guy I knew as a kid would have loved to have been a stuntman, you know? It took me a long time to figure it out though, because it's not it's not an open invitation to get in. I mean it's a little easier now that the work's kind of moved around to Atlanta and stuff. But uh, when I was coming through the ranks, the work was all here in LA and or mostly, you know, you travel for for stuff. Um, but it was a, a very different sort of world you know when they moved to atlanta they pretty much were just short of people so they'd hire nearly anyone and it's a wow. right state so you didn't necessarily need to be part of the union guild and um yeah it was a, just a different sort of world but uh yeah man it's a bit it's been a great career you know i get you get to play <laughs> not over yet <laughs> not over yet no no now i'm coordinating more so it's uh it's been great yeah, I've seen that. That's um, that's exciting stuff. You know, you get to plan out, plan out your stunts, right? Hey, so, you know, I mean, 
everyone knows what what uh, well thinks they know what stunts stunts do, but talking of that with, with coordinating, how about giving us a you know a, a, a breakdown of you know what it what it entails? You know, I mean, like you, you've got a st I suppose just one stunt scene, well, um, you know, whether it's fight or whatever, what, where it begins and and where it ends. Well, it starts with the script. And they usually give you kind of a, 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 a small outline of what they want. There's a car chase <laughs> kind of thing. You know what I mean? And uh, then creatively, you just kind of come up with what would work with uh, the director and the second year director um, and, and see what kind of their angle is and where they're going, where the story kind of leads. And you build it from there. But, you know, I've been lucky with the Bond films because they're – unlimited you know in in so many aspects of seemingly unlimited budgets you know because it's bond uh you get these amazing cars so you're, you're just it's just car pornography yeah um, you know you mean there's aston and the jag from specter were oh. just amazing and they were two cars i mean they they made them specifically for us you know i so, come home to that tv9 in the garage every night <laughs> Yeah, do you? No, I would. Yeah, that car, that car was brilliant. I mean, the most beautiful, beautiful car that I think I've ever seen. Clearly, um, cl clearly, just letting everyone know that that uh, who's watching, we have to be careful about what we say because um, we uh, we're only allowed what's in the public domain. And I've got a few photos here today, which I've had to find off the net, just like anyone else that yeah. were to talk about but um yeah so so sorry you so we were we were still into you know where it goes you start with a script then you get a, a, a chase you come up with some ideas do you pitch like five ideas or ten ideas to the director or is it just one it, it's it kind of, it, it, they kind of grow like you usually have a, a couple ideas but uh, one that you focus on and you know a lot of the time the director isn't necessarily an action director you know so it all depends on who it is like if it is an action director then you know, a lot of the time they have their own ideas and that's cool. And you just kind of make those come, come to life. Um, but if the, the director necessarily isn't an action director, and there's a few of those that um, they're usually quite happy to uh, come in with, you know, when you come in with ideas for them and, um, and they do like, they do like the input a lot more, you know, they do like to, to, to let you kind of design it and you come up with stuff, you give them an idea Obviously, uh, you got to rehearse it. Rehearsals are often a lot harder than the shoot days because you're obviously trying everything out and planning everything out. Um, so then you go from there, and then once you're once it's all approved, yeah, you uh, you do previs of it if you'd like, uh, if they would like, um, and yeah, you make it come to life. Oh, now, talk of previs, I've really noticed that that's stepped up big time now to the point where you guys will have probably a stunt guy, but you'll have a dedicated camera camera operator with a camera. And it's, I mean, it's as good as anything that you're going to see cinema wise. You just haven't got the sets. It's, you know, it's in your training facility. And, and um, you know, I worked on a film recently and it just blew my mind uh, to the point that um, these, you know, the guys that are filming it are getting gigs when we actually come to shoot the stunt, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's the new way. The new way is uh, you got to be kind of all around her with the camera now. You got to, you kind of have to, in a sense, be a director. Um, yeah. which is cool. Uh, it, it is a different sort of way. Um, you know, there's give and take with that, depending on the budget of the film, yeah. as to if you can have, you know, your team kind of with you. You know, often you it's just you. And, you know, if you work on a lower budgeted thing, you just don't have the luxury of it, you know? Even when I, I did, when I coordinated Crank 2, can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> um, it wasn't as large a budget, you know? So, uh, Was that Neville Dean? Yeah, Neville Dean Taylor. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mark Brian Brian. and um, and um, Mark. Mark, yeah, 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 love those guys. Well, yeah, yeah I mean. I've done a f quite a few films with them. Well, both of them, they like to pick up a camera, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mark, Mark, especially. Mark's talented as anything with the camera. I mean, he, you know what? It was early days. Um, I did Crank 1 and Crank 2. And uh, Crank 1 was the first film I did with them. And Mark, I mean, you learn a lot 
because they, they just shoot a lot. They shoot a lot of different things. They come up with creative shots. Uh, their creativity was, it, it's re it was really inspiring in, in a lot of ways, you know, because yeah. cause they would just go for it. Mark is just a, talented on, on roller blades and whatnot, you know? Oh man, we had him on the blades on uh, Ghost Rider. Yeah, he loves he was, it. He was getting dragged along at like 50 mile an hour and we're like, come on. Yeah, I saw him, uh, Darren and I, Darren Prescott uh, coordinated that one, Crank One. And uh, we were watching him. We definitely thought Mark was going down. You know, there's a pothole in the middle of the road and he's going like 30, skating around a car, you know, just skating all around yeah. it. This hole's coming up, and you're just like, oh, the man's going down. And he just hopped in and yeah. kept going. I think Perfect. Rick English, our buddy, was um, riding the – I know he was riding the bike, but I think he was actually towing him as well when we were doing some bike stuff. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, crazy stuff. And um, with the crank, I think it was my buddy Justin Lubin was still on, on that. Big J, Big Justin. Oh, I couldn't remember. Um, oh, check. He does all the scary stuff too, like Annabelle and all of that. All oh, really? Stuff. I've done a couple of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a crazy photographer. I must have him on actually. Huh? And have a little, I must have him on actually have a chat to him about shooting horror. Yeah, um, yeah. They're quite fun horror films actually, I have to say. Cause oh, I can imagine. They're not scary at all when you're doing them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, when, I was a kid, fun. when I was a kid, I went and saw um, Night of the Living Dead, I think. And I think I've yeah. seen the first three minutes of that um, <laughs> 40 times. And uh, I've, never got, I've, never got, I've never got past the rough on the wall in the cabin. I was like, no, nah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not much of a scary movie guy either. I, I kind of like the comedies and I love the scary movie. I'd have to see them all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? you know? uh, yeah but it's been good. Hey, so Frost, I wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, just our process and our relationship um, on set. Now, um, for me, I'm only as good as the access I'm given, and that comes all the way down from uh, from the first AD to directors to um, stunts and actors and uh, and safety, of course. Now, the way that uh, it works in the UK, and, and I'm not sure about the US, but... Um, Anything that's that has an element of risk, which which um, anything can go sideways, but thankfully mm -hmm. most often it, it doesn't. Um, we always have a backup, and and as a photographer, I don't just go and plonk myself in the middle of the action and um, hose it down and hope I get something uh, pretty rad. But there's a whole team behind it, and 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 an approval process. Like first, I will um, go to effects. I'll go to safety, then I'll go to stunts to make sure that it's fine, and then I'll go to the first AD and let them know that I've cleared it in all these different departments. And then from that point, um, someone I like or someone who likes me usually <laughs> says, I'll look after you. <laughs> and more often than not, you get, and I'm sorry about it, but more often than not, you've been stuck with the task in the middle of these oh, I loved it. scenes <laughs> to have to look after me. <laughs> and, and it is a major amount of trust. And I've got, um, there's a scene that we, we shot on Spectre of the DV9 flying through the air and we're in a very thin alley. And um, and I've got the images which I got off, off, offline actually, um, online, offline. And um, and with this with this shot, with these shots, I'm gonna just bring it up, up um, add the, to the screen. This is the alleyway. <laughs> I remember that alley well. <laughs> yeah, right. And we were, you can see my cursor. We were down, I think, around in this area. Thing. Yeah. But there's two shots that I have here, and this is the way that I like to shoot, which you're familiar with. Is I, I like to um, use camera rigs, and at, at you know the latest, latest big one that I did, I, I was running five cameras at one time. Wow. A, a frequently and it's like you know one camera two cameras it really doesn't matter anymore it's like i just go and shove them anywhere and uh and some of my best shots now are coming from from rigs and you know educated guesswork but with this one i only had two i only had two cameras i had one mounted down about to the right of where we're looking at now and then i obviously had the one a handheld in the doorway now um let's just go and have a look 
at the this is the one that from the camera rig so um so frosty just oh well actually i'll explain the camera rig so the camera rig is is uh down here on the left it's um i think it was a d a nikon d4 uh with 35 mil f2 and i know it's a bit technical but it's 10,000 iso which is quite a lot and it was eight hundredth of a second at f2 and i needed that fast shutter to freeze it in the air the quality is not the greatest in the world um but it's a pretty rad shot and i know that uh lagonda have it have it uh, on their walls but no, here's one yeah yeah it's pretty cool and they gave me a jacket i'm stoked <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm just going to take you to the to the one which which i want you to explain you know well you can you can tell us but how you and i go through this process Absolutely. and what you let me get away with um in complete safety and this is this is the shot here this is with a, a D, nikon d4s with a um uh 200 millimeter f2 same exposure um but this is this is the shot that i'm hand hand holding and i'm also firing off my pocket wizard to to get the remote to go now um this is where the trust factor comes in here because obviously i want to be exposed for as long as possible take it away for us he explained to me what goes on in your head when you're um, not only looking after yourself but having to think about a clumsy old photographer like myself <laughs> well fortunately the clumsy old photographer is uh spot on all the time and he's he's just a bold man so uh it's my pleasure to always save to you because i'm always right in the heart of it and that's where i prefer to be so it, it, it to me it's it's a pleasure to get the safe to you because you put yourself out there and you put yourself in kind of a, a you know a, it's a safe spot but it, as you said if things go sour it, it it's a tricky spot but you know we we always have it prepared where we have a safety on you and i always try to volunteer because i know you're going to be in the coolest spot so for this one we're tucked into this doorway and you'd have to lean out and i'd have my hand wrapped around your belt and you know, if that thing, the alleyway was quite thin, you know, it wasn't very much room for, for errors. So you had to pitch yourself out there pretty decently. And uh, as it, uh, you know, as the car came at you, I trusted if it, it landed squarely, then I'd try to let you hang in there as long as you can. But if anything went sour, I'd have to rip you back into the into the, uh, the little doorway there. Um, but uh this is one of the coolest shots we did because uh, the, the DB9 just comes right through that top piece. Or the DB10, I think that one is. It comes right through the rooftop. And we didn't really know what it would do, how it would land or how it would be. And it ended up being a spectacular looking shot. You know, it just had that bold bondness to it. So I was stoked to be part of it. And yeah, and you showed me the shot afterward. I was like, wow. You know, they, they definitely get their money's worth out of you. <laughs> but it's not the first time. I mean, you know, we've been in a couple other spots where – got chilly out here suddenly. We're in a, we've uh, been in a couple other spots where I was safetying you, but, uh, you know, you like to get the best picture. And as, uh, as the photographer that you are, you know what you're looking for. And so for me, it just it's always really fun to just to kind of be out there with you, you know. Oh, and I know, I know you're heads up and you're not going to try to make my job harder, you, you know. And so uh, you actually make my job easier at that point because you're kind of one of us. You always hang out with us anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, but you're bold, you know, you go for it. And I think that there's a lot of people that wouldn't. And I think that factor really helps our, our side of it, you know, because uh, – you, you you watch you you have to watch you but you, you you know just out of the nature of the job and the nature of the the action of it but your head's up as well you're not just some dude who's out there snapping pictures not thinking of anything but his pictures you got the whole thing in your brain you know and you got it all figured out which makes it a lot easier for us so uh, yeah for me i appreciate that kind of, I, I appreciate being in the heart of it i remember this scene we were doing the stair the stair uh uh the stair sequence oh, yeah, yeah yeah and uh you had just a, you were in a great spot for that car coming down and yeah. that car was just kind of squirrely a bit because uh it was stair 
downstairs. You know, you're coming downstairs at a good at a good tick. So uh, I was ready to go into the into the river, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the plan. That was our escape plan. Because that's what we. I mean, that's what we do. We have an exit. I mean, that's the most important thing. Is it's an exit. You, can't, you cannot be stuck in a spot. Um, you know, it's in my to any of us. newspaper days with the you know working in in Korea and stuff like that, it's always you had an exit. You know, you don't sit next to a window. Always have an exit. Yeah. <laughs> and in this case, I remember it clearly. You know, I'm leaning out. Um, you've got me by the belt and my black rapid strap. Yeah. And and I'm leaning out and it's like, Frosty, I'm just going to keep shooting and you pull me in when I have to come in. And I remember it's like I just kept shooting and shooting. <laughs> and, and then you pull me in. It's like the car was you know, like maybe five feet away or something. Like that. But, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's that trust and you, you, and, and like, I just go, I just go limp and allow me to move when you guys are um, pulling me out of the way. And, and I think that is the, one of the reasons why you guys do give me this amazing access access is because it is a mutual trust. I'm not going to break Absolutely. one little thing that you guys have told me to do. And if I don't feel comfortable, I'm not going to do it. Um, and if you guys sit there and say, tiger, no, then I don't argue. I so I walk away uh, because um, you guys, you know, it, it's it's a trust thing, you know. And if I if you arc up and start fighting, well, then you're going to get put 15 feet down the track, even three feet down the track, and that three feet down the track is the difference between this shot and no shot. So, yeah, um, absolutely. And then you know that that's the difference of getting a guy that does kind of know what he knows what he wants and has the confidence to, to ask for what he wants, um, which helps us, you know, for any of this, but you know, you're open, you're open minded to, to, if someone suggests like, Hey, what do you think of this place? And you're, you're cool with that as well. You know, I know Gary would always suggest some place yeah. for the camera. Um, and he's, you know, he's often right. <laughs> Gary's awesome. He, he, this is Gary Powell, uh, one of the the great stunt coordinators, and yeah, arguably he, he would sit there and go, "Tiger, come over here," and I'd, I'd stand next to him as the car would be flying past, and it'd be like, "Okay, man," and, but I know he's so big. All he'd have to do is give me a little elbow, and I'd be fifteen feet down the track. But uh, but yeah, I mean, nothing is done. Nothing is done in in risk. It's all you know. It's, it's all, all planned out with with. That is how it always should be. It, it isn't just fly by the seat of your pants and we're not just random daredevils. I mean, a lot of the stuff we do is there's risk involved, yeah. he heavy risk. I've been injured many, many, many times. Um, but most of it's calculated, you know, and, and whenever I work with Gary, he's super calculated. So yeah. I always enjoy that. Darren Prescott was the same way, very calculated guy. And looks after the team, you know, which is an important thing, you know, and you get surrounded by top, top people that, you know, kind of have your back as well. And I get lucky because I get put in a coordinating position with Gary. So uh, I get to be in the heart of it all the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah right. Hey, um, so last up, because I know that you got to get, you got to get going, but um, I wanted to ask you two things, and I'm sure that you're probably similar to me. I get asked all the time my favorite film to work on and you know i can't say it because there's so many different elements of of you know what was great you know like mad max was amazing bonds are incredible the bonds are incredible but there's always something different so i have two questions so the first one would be obviously is there a favorite film for frosty there's two and i, I think of them as equal i uh, i did where the wild things are in australia yes um, and I loved it. It was I, I was the chicken in the film, and uh, Douglas. <laughs> Do <you want> a <laughs> chicken? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of my first huge yeah. travel jobs. We were there for six months. I loved Australia. All the people were fantastic. Um, I loved every bit of it. Six six to seven months I was there, and just loved every bit of it. And I got injured pretty decently on that film, but I never missed a day, and I just kept trooping through it, and. Uh, yeah, it was uh, that was for the longest time my favorite project I ever worked on, and then recently for versus Ferrari. Yeah, I, I would love to have done that. Ah, you would have been amazing on that. Oh man, those cars were fantastic. I mean, great yeah. photography. The, 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 you know, it was it was great work on it. But you know, I do look at yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. sure you do. You see it all. 
You could have yeah. had some great pictures out of that. Was, you guys did some amazing stuff. I mean, was it all with um, was the tracking vehicle all all edge arm and stuff like that, or yeah, or did you have it mounted on race cars as well? No, no, we we had some cars out there, and you know the edge was uh, leading, and then it would it would it would catch it, and we that was done. Most of that stuff was done in Atlanta. Oh, most really? Of, most of the race tracks were. Uh, Le Mans was here in L.A. at uh, Agua Dulce Airport, uh, the last the, the 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 main strip, the main yeah. street. Um, but yeah, most most of it was done here in LA, which was rare because things weren't done here at that point too much. So uh, it was quite a treat to just be home doing a film. I you know, uh, it was with Matt again. So you, you know, I've known know. Matt. Like yeah, I've known Matt since Ultimatum. So uh, uh, since Born Ultimatum, and we did I did uh, Jason Bourne with him as well. So uh, yeah, ten years later, the ten year gap. <laughs> Yeah, right. You know, hey, but, uh, yeah, and then so, Ford Ferrari was fantastic. Yeah, and yeah, and exactly what you're saying. You know, it was like you know, and Matt makes um the set a pleasure to be on. You know, what a what a solid human that guy is. Yeah, uh. absolutely. He's he's one of my favorite uh, actors I've ever been lucky yeah. enough to work with. You know, you haven't worked with Hemsy yet, have you? I haven't. I met him though, and I do his workout every day. I do the the seven <laughs> six one. Okay. Beats me, yeah, beat me He's up. Great. It's, but, like uh, they, it's like they should have been brothers or something, those two. Yeah, anyway. I in Matt's house. Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, such a solid dude. So, Frosty, the other one, the other question, what would uh, – what? Th there's no crazy stunts because, uh, as we've spoken about, it was all calculated and planned out. But what is um, – what's your – your favorite stunt that you think you've done in your career? I mean, there's bound to be bucket loads, but is there a standout? Uh, let me see. I did, I flew out a window. I could send you a video of that so you have it. Um, I had to do this, I did a film called with, uh, um, Sky High, Disney film, kid film. Yeah, yeah. Kurt Russell, Kelly Preston. Uh, I doubled the main kid. I was one of the doubles for the main kid, uh, Michael Ingrano. And I had to fly out this huge, uh, huge pane window, uh, probably a thirty-foot window or something like that. Massive. And uh, we we're we we're doing it on high-speed winches, but at this time, high-speed winches were still problematic and still uh, experimental in a lot of ways. You know, they were used for Cirque du Soleil, and they went. I think they told me they went twelve miles an hour. I think I went thirty-eight miles an hour. <laughs> and. Uh, it was the first time those things went like that. So uh, we were testing it, and on the first rehearsal, well, on the rehearsal, we usually test it with the body bag. First, my weight flies oh, out. Yeah. You know, so uh, we, we build it up that way. And then once we put a person in it, we trickle it back down to, say, 80% or 70%, and then slowly build it back up. Uh, with this gag, so we do it with just the body bag, uh, the high-speed winches in those days, before the, the brains had been figured out a little differently, but back in those days, if the computer brain felt any kind of um, loft, any kind of uh, uh, non-tension in the line, it would shut down. Oh. The brain of it would shut it down. So when it got to the high point, it would loft and just be light. And so the computer brain would shut down, which turns this bag into a wrecking ball. Oh, no way. Would, and it would wreck the set. Boom, oh, boom, boom. Three times in a row. I'm like, and that's a dead man. That's me being dead. <laughs> so I watched this thing, and, and I was still trying to earn my stripes with uh, Ghost Stunts and Darren and those guys. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, Darren's like, so they, 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 they mess with it. They figure it out. It works three times in a row. It just didn't work three times in a row, and now it does work three times in a row. They're like, you're up. Okay, so I gear up, I get kind of set for it. I'm like, I just saw this thing destroy a bag. <laughs> and uh, and they're like, well, the other problem is we can't trickle it down. This one only works at 100%. Okay, so no nothing. We're just going for it. Three times it worked. So there's no half pace. No. Nope. Just go big. Yeah. And uh, so I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, let's do it. You know, you can't, you can't. You know, that's what you're there for. So uh, I did it. It worked out. And I was terrified for a minute. 
but you know that's part of the bravery of it i guess and uh it worked out and um darren comes up to me and he's like wait a man up dude i wouldn't have done that i'm like you told me <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh well, yeah if you find a link to that to that um to that stunt you got to uh flick it to me so i can put it in in the about section or uh or in the comments or something. Yeah, so I definitely have it on my phone, so I'll send it to you. That's phone. just nuts. Yeah, hey, but now there's, there's one thing too that I wanted. There was um, which I love about the the family and the camaraderie that you guys have, and um, and uh, the boys in the UK. And I'm not sure if it's an English thing, and I, don't, I I mean if it's an American thing as well, but they don't do it in Australia. That just before you guys go to do a, do any stunt and pre and especially a big stunt. The boys are like, see you after for a beer. Or uh, uh, just another day at the office. We never say good luck. Yeah, good luck right. is uh, not good luck. <laughs> and before that window gag, one of the guys, one of the rigger guys oh. we had decided to say good luck. And I was strapped to a line. I couldn't go anywhere and I couldn't do anything. Oh. And he's like, good luck, Frosty. I'm like, yeah, man, we don't really do that. You know, he's, he wasn't a stunt guy. He's just one of the riggers. But uh, he, he, he knew what he was saying. And he kept messing with me with that because I was stuck in a line. Oh, you were uh, shackles going to survive? I'm like, <laughs> that's not the. I'd, I'd want to punch him. I'm sorry. First you got to just get a kick at it. But you know what? And I understood the guy wasn't. He wasn't a stunt guy. You know. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes yeah. You get that little battle against other departments or even our own department if they're not performing the stunt. You know. Yeah. When, yeah. That's yeah. just part of the, the the machismo factor, but it's okay. It worked out fantastically. So. Uh, I, you, have skin. you have to have a bit of thick skin in this business. <laughs> All right, right. I might have to have you back on again because we we're uh, we, we got to got, got to your limit. And I know oh, that you wow, that was quick. <laughs> have you got time to hang out in the green room for a tick? I'm going to wrap it up here and then um, so I can have a quick chat. Yeah, please. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in the virtual green room. <laughs> All right, I hope it's comfortable. There's um, in this green room. <laughs> oh, you know, I mean, yeah, it's the times, mate. I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> lo that's the low budget, low budget. Yeah. I like All these right, gonna, budgets. <laughs> I know, right? All right I'll, I'll catch you in two secs. You can you can listen to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, team. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was um, Craig Silver, my my dear buddy Frosty. And um, wow, what an insight, huh? Um, like I said, you know, whatever you guys are interested in, flick me a message and and uh, and let me know what crew you want to want to have a chat to. But um, as the stunts would say, see you for a beer later. All right, ciao now. Oh yeah, ring the bell thing and subscribe if you can be bothered. You never know who might turn up.